Hello and welcome to TMFT Adventures. My name is Lisa Keegan and I hope you're enjoying the fermenting week so far. Look, today we're going to make something a little different. Now you've watched me make yogurt plenty of times. Like we have it on rotation at our house. It is beautiful and it's just so easy to make. Always making the next batch with a little bit of your previous batch. So it makes it really just for the cost of milk, sometimes a little bit of sugar if it's due for feeding, sometimes in, um, vanilla, but it is so easy to make. So I'm gonna take it to a slightly different, um, different angle today where we turn it into a drinking yogurt. So come with me today, I wanna show you how this is done. It does call for long life milk. I'm gonna turn my own milk into long life milk. So let's see how we do this. So clicking on this, uh, it says to first of all, place some chocolate into it. So obviously this recipe involves chocolate. That's a good thing, right? Uh, it says 55% no, 50 cocoa solid chocolate. Um, I've got 91%. We like dark here in this house. We actually you know, don't like the milky creamy stuff, but I reckon you could use whatever you would usually cook or have in your house. So just breaking this up so that it fits down the blade shaft. My bowl's fresh out of a dishwasher. You do want a clean, uncontaminated bowl with yogurt, actually any of our fermenting things, because otherwise you'll grow the wrong sort of um, things in there. You know, because it's sitting at room temperature, let me do that, it makes an ideal breeding ground for bacteria, really. Um, just check it and put any elf oil in there. But we don't want to promote the wrong stuff. We want to promote the right stuff. So you want to make sure your bowl is nice and clean. Okay, if you've ever got a yogurt that has been a runny yogurt at the end, after the ferment, it's usually because the bowl was dirty. Best thing you can actually do is turn that straight away into yogurt cake, um, freeze it into ice blocks, things like that. Okay, we're gonna grate this down really roughly to start off with today. Next, and it's got a chop and it's got three seconds speed seven. Just looking for something to store it in. I didn't uh, plan ahead for that and I just had that thought. So now it needs to transfer to a bowl and set aside. I do love this though. It does not require us to clean out the bowl, which to me, happy days. So there you go, we've grated chocolate down in the Thermomix. Super quick, super easy. I'm gonna use my bowl, my sorry, my Thermomix lid as a funnel, because otherwise I'm gonna drop these shavings all over the floor. So in that goes. There are some larger chunks in there, that's okay. I'll take care of them later. So, little bits melted on the bottom, probably because my bowl was wet, and not wet, warm. I'm not worried about that, okay? It's gonna have a slight chocolate tinge to it, an undertone to it. I don't think anyone in my family is going to complain about that. So in that goes. Now it doesn't tell us to wash out the bowl, so that's, I love that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go straight on just got to remember tomorrow, because this ferments for 12 hours, got to remember the chocolates there when we come back. Now, it doesn't say to clean out the bowl. Happy days. What we do need is long life milk. Um, now, I don't have that. I've got full cream. You do need full cream, but we're going to turn it into long life. So we're going to cook it. And you'd be familiar with this, because normally if you make a whole uh, milk yogurt normally, it tells you to cook it up to 80 degrees and then let it cool. And it's the hardest part of the recipe, right? You're having to be patient, waiting for it to cool. So we're just gonna jump, oh, we're gonna jump out of this recipe and do that. You might've noticed I was a little light on on the milk. Uh, I'm just using what I had left. Don't get hung up on that stuff, okay? Use what you've got. So we're gonna jump out of the recipe, push the house key, and it'll actually bookmark it if I can see the house key. Okay, now we're going to put on the timer. I'm gonna guess, let's go 10 minutes. But if it gets up to temperature earlier, I can stop it. So we're aiming for 80 degrees. And then we're just gonna go on speed one and off it goes. So this is cooking off the natural bacteria within there um, so that we can then culture it with the yogurt cultures that we're gonna add in a moment. Now if you don't have yogurt cultures, you can go buy a pot set yogurt and use that as a starter and then always use your previous batch. Or you could buy, you can actually buy little grains that are yogurt starters, or you can get some Inner Health Plus or the equivalent kind of tablets and use those in there as well. So I'll be back in, it won't be 10 minutes because we have to wait, let it cool back down to 40 degrees. So I'll probably be in about an hour's time and I'll take you through the next step of this recipe. Alternatively to this time, of course, you could buy your two cartons of long life milk, 
put them in and skip this step all together. Okay, but I don't have it, work with what you got. So I'll see you in about an hour's time when this is down to 40 degrees and we'll do the next step together. So take care, I'll see you soon. Okay, so my milk has heated up. It's then come back down to about 40 degrees. And if I touch it, like it's nice and warm to touch. It is cold here, uh, but it's not hot. It's nowhere near hot. And that's really what we want. Now we're getting our plain yogurt, uh, full fat, everything like that. And you can see it's just beautiful. And I don't know if you can kind of see, it's a bit hard to see, but anyway, 120 grams of this in here. Now my milk in here is a bit um, chocolate colored. Oh, I just made a mess. Oh, well. It's a bit chocolatey color, um, but I'm not too fussed on that. Look how thick this yogurt is, by the way. Ugh. Just beautiful. Nothing better than homemade yogurt. If you haven't made it, give it a go. I'm gonna lift that bit up later <laughs> with a spoon. Some sugar. Now, I've never made this version before, so I am going to not use this much. I'll probably add 50 grams. Um, of sugar in okay no 65 it is but it's an interesting recipe because we actually make the yogurt in the bowl and it's going to end up quite thick like this but instead of putting it in the fridge we then whip it up add the chocolate chip that we grated into it and then we serve it in we let it sit in a fridge for two hours and then serve it up so that it's it's literally drinking yogurt so i'm so excited to give it a go so vanilla to finish off if you don't have that just use whatever you've got and lid on to now ferment and if you don't have fermenting mode as i made mention uh warm spot okay the warmest spot you can find um actually it's got a stir step first let's just stir this through for 10 seconds on speed three it's mixing it together then it's going to ferment so warm spot in a garage a car the warmest spot in your house if you've got an oven that has just a light light setting that will work it's rather cold at the moment here so leaving it out somewhere is not an option in summer i can but not at this time of year it's just too cold so place the measuring cup in still and then it's going to ferment 12 hours 50 degrees which is actually quite a warm ferment really and off it goes so we can just spin that up i'm actually going to turn that 50 down to 40. i don't want to overcook it um what i understand about yogurt cultures is if they get too hot they die so let's see if i can adjust that manually uh, they possibly are allowing for the fact that, I'll make it 45, they're possibly allowing for the fact that it's got a lot of liquid in there, but also um, with, with being a bit runnier, the final product, you're not looking for a really thick one, then, then maybe that's part of the reason they do it at a higher temperature. Anyway, I'm just going to take control of that, I'm going to pull it down a bit, which is the possibilities of when you've got guided recipes is you can override them. I'm going to spin this dial and tomorrow I will come back and finish this recipe where we actually whip it up in here, uh, add our chopped chips and then put it away in the fridge for a couple of hours before we enjoy it. So I can't wait to show you this drinking yogurt um, later on tomorrow when it is done. So I will see you then for the next step. Take care and I'll see you then. Bye for now. Welcome back guys. It has been, uh, I'm going to say 12 hours, but it's actually been more like 15 maybe even closer to 20 hours that this has been sitting in here this would have finished in the early hours of the morning but i've just left it sit in here i turned my thermomix back on and it said do i want to continue my recipe where i left off and i said yes please so now uh, it's at that step where we finished and we're just going to go next and see what happens now it says to whip the measuring cup still in place and then it says we're going to whip it up before we do let me just show you the texture now i did leave a fair chunk of chocolate in the bottom okay so there's no doubt that i've actually left more than what was required in the bottom so let's have a look at the texture in there um you can see that's your texture in there it hasn't gone in the fridge now ordinarily uh your yogurt needs to go in a fridge and set for like two hours and ours does but it does after this next whipping step so this is a drinking yogurt not like the one you saw me put into this that was that real thick if i put this in the fridge undisturbed now it will set solid hard it'll be beautiful but because it hasn't yet been chilled that's why we're seeing it still at that consistency which is fine all right so let's have a taste amazing just got that hint of chocolate in it yum all right let's whip this up and get it finished off because then it's got to go in the fridge uh for an hour it does say two hours let's be real it's probably going to be half an hour at my house um before the kids devour it they're just searching for a sixth jar as we speak so 10 seconds speed four let's spin it out 
Let's get this nice and smooth and silky. Remember the chopped chips from yesterday? And I think I only did 100 grams, not 200 grams. And I use very dark chocolate, 91% rather than 70, I think it was at 50%, whatever they ask for. Use whatever you've got though, right? Add the reserved chocolate. So now it looks like a milkshake in there, okay? Kind of that really thicker, kind of smoothie, milkshakey type look. So in with the chopped chips, and then it says to stir with the spatula. So tempted just to go back and do that step before, but anyway, let's do what it says. Give it a stir with the spatula. And then it tells us to stir with the spatula and then transfer into our jars or our bottle. So I'll show you what this looks like. It really does look like a chocolate milkshake is what it resembles. And then let's put this here. You guys will see it as I pour it out. It is beautiful. It is drinking consistency at this stage. I am curious to see what it comes out of the fridge like. There you go. You see that? Just beautiful. So homemade drinking chocolate drinking yogurt with chocolate in your Thermomix and yes 12 hours overnight and I didn't use long life milk I actually converted my own fresh milk to long life milk but so simple when you've got a Thermomix right so achievable so doable so all right I'm just gonna put that there you do need to obviously pick your timing with this recipe you do not want to make this before dinner time and then require you know your Thermomix um, for dinner all right, unless you've got two. If you've got the privilege of two, which is awesome, love having two Thermomixes, then obviously that's fine. But otherwise, just remember to do it after dinner. Clean bowl so you get a good um, a good yogurt that's not going to have to be put to other uses because it doesn't actually culturize. But I will take a photo of these when they're done and they're set. I'll do a bit of a, a scoop with a spoon as well and show you what texture that looks like so that you can get an idea about is it actually drinking or is it more like scooping with a spoon texture? But I hope I've inspired you to try a new recipe on your Thermomix. Whether it's a TM31, TM5, TM6 thermo cooker, give this a go because Cookie Do and the Thermomix is just opens up possibilities of recipes that we otherwise probably wouldn't have given a go to. We would have bought it when it looked good on the supermarket shelves, paid the price for that, whether that be actually the value money or whether that be the extra numbers and preservatives and additives, whereas we can make this ourselves knowing what's in it, which is pretty cool. So thank you for joining me today. Reach out if I can support you in any way. I hope you're enjoying this fermenting series and learning lots about how you can use your Thermomix or get a Thermomix to then use it to do these amazing foods. And do reach out if I can help you get one or get the most out of it. So take care, share this with people around you who will find value in this information. Uh, subscribe to the channel as well. Because that's how we you know impart this info to other people really I show up there's 300 videos here on my uh, YouTube channel for your picking some of them are old and some of them are very lesser quality because they are from when I started you know when we were thrown into the, the COVID world back beginning of 2020 and I didn't have webcams I didn't have microphones so some of them please be gracious with me when you find those old ones and you're like oh this is really pixelated you know uh, we've come a long way but i'm not going to remove them because i know there is still value in them as much as sometimes they're better to be listened to rather than looked at uh, but and also you know for those videos as well that are in my caravan as we traveled uh both last year and the year before for significant amounts of time you know sometimes you don't have reception or quality reception in those places. So do bear me with me when the things aren't quite right. We have been jiggling around with different microphones and setups to make sure you are getting the best uh, that, from me that I can because I really do want you to get the very most out of your Thermomix investment. So thanks for joining me today. Continue to uh, watch, be inspired, gain confidence with your Thermomix and reach out if I can help you. But otherwise, take care and I'll see you in the next video soon. Bye for now. Okay, the yogurt has been in the fridge for uh, the couple of hours and I've come back to see is it actually a drinking yogurt or is it actually like a scooping yogurt? Now the kids have taken off with their jars and as you saw I only had five jars so I put mine in a cup and which I think I got the best deal actually with the volume but let's have a look at it. It actually is quite thick. It's beautiful. Definitely drinking yogurt consistency. So if you are buying drinking yogurt, here is your solution. If you don't want to do chocolate, just skip it. I reckon it'd be beautiful with some uh, raspberry Kool-Aid in it, 
some thickened mango, some um, mango, just uh, not a moment, curd or passion fruit curd or lemon curd through it. Actually, lemon could be a little bit too tart, but absolutely amazing. Beautiful. It is a drink. It's come out like a drink, which I'm super impressed with as well. So put this on your to-do list. Tell me what you think and let me know if it's something you're going to add to your repertoire of things that you can confidently make with your Thermomix. Anyway, thanks for joining me today. My name is Lisa Keegan. Enjoy all the videos and reach out if I can support you in any way. So take care. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.